the President of the United States. On January 27, President Donald Trump told the National Governors Association meeting about his plans for massive increase in military spending. Trump ran on a fiscally conservative platform, promising to repeal Obamacare and defund the EPA. At the same time, his other main platform was security, which is expensive and does not appear to go hand in hand with his call to drain the swamp. My first budget will be submitted to the Congress next month, and it will include a historic increase in defense spending to rebuild the depleted military of the United States of America at a time we most need it. Defense spending in the most recent fiscal year was $584 billion, according to the Congressional Budget Office. So Trump's planned $54 billion increase would be a rise of 9.2 percent. The United States already has the world's most powerful fighting force, and it spends far more than any other country on defense, including the combined spending of the UK, France, China, India, Russia, Japan, and Saudi Arabia. Although its special forces and air force are active against Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, such a military spending hike would be unusual, given that the United States is not leading or engaged in a major ground war or facing an imminent military attack. An official familiar with the proposal said that Trump's request for the Pentagon included more money for shipbuilding, military aircraft, and sending forces into the Strait of Hormuz in South China Sea, which could put Washington at increasing odds with Iran and China. Trump has previously said that he would expand the army from 540,000 active duty troops from its current 480,000, increase the Marine Corps from 23 to 36 battalions, or by as many as 10,000 more Marines, boost the Navy from 276 to 350 ships and submarines, and raise the number of Air Force tactical aircraft from 1,100 to 1,200. In a speech to conservative activists on Friday, Trump promised, quote, one of the greatest military buildups in American history. So let's look at the price tag of some of this hardware in this chart by MilitaryEducation.org, which compares the prices with items and services needed on civilian life. And paying for a single fully equipped U.S. soldier costs $17,500 a year. This would cover more than one year of an average family's health insurance. One cruise missile at $830,000 would cover 55 families' health insurance. One Abrams tank at $6.2 million could mean 412 families' health insurance costs. And one B-52 stealth bomber at over $1 billion would pay for health insurance for 67,000 families. This defense spending increase will be offset and paid for by finding greater savings and efficiencies across the federal government. Obamacare is a failed disaster. According to the Congressional Budget Office, the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, provided coverage to about 24 million people. The cost of the ACA over the next 10 years is the same current cost of the F-35 program, which has not yet met its original stated goals. Now, I have to tell you, it's an unbelievably complex subject. Nobody knew that health care could be so complicated. Meanwhile, the city of Baltimore is experiencing a deficit, which is roughly the cost of a single F-22 Raptor fighter jet. The $54 billion spike in military expenditures proposed by Trump could fund Baltimore's education budget for 41 years, using as a sample the cost for 2017, which was estimated on $1.3 billion by the school's authority. My budget increases spending and the increase in all spending for federal law enforcement also, and activities having to do with law enforcement, will be substantially increased. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell estimated that the 1,300-mile-long project would cost $15 billion. As for the extreme vetting and its infamous travel ban, which shocked the world, citing top industry executives, Forbes reported that travelers are adjusting their travel plans, with the greatest losses projected from Europe, Mexico, and the Middle East as well as a loss of $7.38 billion a year due to not only tougher visa requirements, but also antipathy to U.S. foreign policy. We must ensure that our courageous service men and women have the tools they need to deter war and, when called upon to fight in our name, only do one thing, win. We have to win. We have to start winning wars again. I have to say, when I was young in high school and college, Everybody used to say, we never lost a war. We never lost a war, you remember. For more coverage on this and other stories, visit therealnews.com. Mm -hmm.